and welcome to Becky's House of Sewing. Today, I am in my living room of my house of sewing. Um, so welcome to everybody. Thank you for joining me, tuning in, whatever you'd like to do. Um, again, this is Becky's House of Sewing channel, where I talk about all things thread and needle, uh, mostly quilting and cross stitch. Um, but again, you never want to rule anything out. Uh, I'm definitely attracted to all things with needles and thread and textiles and all the things, so you never know. Uh, today, though, it's definitely all cross-stitch and quilting, and um, so let's get started. I do want to say thank you uh, to Lady Robbins uh, for another lovely shout-out. I appreciate it. Um, I just... I'm so glad I have met her um, and excited that I realized she has a floss tube as well. So it's a lady Robin with a Y and an S at the end. Um, and she, I just, I'm so glad we're friends. That's all I have to say. I just uh, am really looking forward to maybe one day uh, getting to meet you, Robin. And uh, one day, you know, bucket list. Uh, I, I, some people have a bucket list of where you want to go. I have some things that, some shops I'd like to go to, but uh, I definitely have a bucket list of people I want to stitch with. <laughs> Robin, you're on my list. I don't know how you feel about it, but you are. So, um, today is Sunday, December 10th, 15 days to Christmas. Um, I am in Waxhaw, North Carolina, and it is a gray, rainy day, which is still bright, so it's not like, um, super dark, um, but it is rainy, everything's wet, so all the colors are super saturated, which I just love. I just love, um, when it rains and everything is just that richer color. Um, and I do not mind a gray day. I mind several gray days in a row. I'm definitely solar powered. Um, I hate the winter time because it's just dark all the time. And um, luckily, December 21st is the winter solstice. So I'm greatly looking forward to that because it only gets lighter from there. <laughs> sure, by the seconds, but I will count them down so I'm excited that things will get lighter again um, you may see me petting my dog here's Mia Mia she's like what are you doing who are you talking to I just want to lay down um, I'm surrounded by my stitchy things it is um, been an anxious two weeks maybe um, it's been a little sad two weeks and um, it's just how it's been so one tries to find comfort in in crafting and uh, I definitely have been uh, bouncing around a little bit so uh, in order to find comfort so nothing tragic has happened um, I've had a couple things uh, work has been hard at the container store which curious crafters you know I work at the container store right so every time you mention the container store I'm like I work there um, regardless <laughs> uh, it's been a hard couple weeks at the container store um, in my role and not, everything's fine but it's just been hard and then uh, two weeks ago my favorite of all favorite podcasts announced that they were only going to have two more live shows and then they were going to disband the regular podcast, not disband the community they've created. And they are certainly active women in, um, in society. <laughs> so they're not going away per se, but their weekly chats are, and <laughs> it's a podcast. I know I don't know them, though when you listen to things, 
um, especially when you've listened to them for several years in a row. They really are your friends, um, and I'm going to miss the conversation. I was really upset, <laughs> and I still am. I feel myself getting a little teary. Like, the Satellite Sisters is the podcast I'm talking about. If you have not listened to them in the past, they've been on air for over 20 years. They have been on NPR, ABC Radio. They've been um, on different platforms in, in the podcast form. Um, I was introduced to them through one of the sisters, uh, Liz Dolan. I found her on a business podcast, and she's had an illustrious corporate career through Nike, Oprah, National Geographic, um, and then she kept talking about her satellite sisters, and I got listening to them and just fell in love with them. The same way that you fall in love with a community of stitchers, like where you just get together, you solve world problems, um, you're there for each other through thick and thin kind of scenario. And though they don't know what's going on in my life, we have experienced their life together. Um, this is very moving. I'm going to cry. I'm going to miss their weekly chats. Um, it's one of the thing, one of the podcasts that made me realize I definitely desired a female community um, and it helped me uh, recognize by joining the Quilt, Charlotte Quilters Guild and listening to this podcast and then reviving Wednesday Stitchers just how important that whole component in my life is. Um, women of all ages, um, all different backgrounds, all of that is important to me. Um, don't make me cry. <laughs> so, having that go away has been hard. How do I feel that? Let's go shopping, shall we? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, so, I just, I, I, I just didn't know how to, to, hand I mean obviously I I know enough that like you got to keep your hands working you got to do something creative and artsy um kind of continue to work through those feelings that's all important Brene Brown taught me a lot okay I know I know the things <laughs> and you got to feel the feels you gotta you can't you can't stuff them down you got it the only way is through uh, blah 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 I get it um but because I was kind of all over the place, I was all over the place with stitching and crafting and I just didn't know. I would try one thing, I'm like, no, that doesn't feel good. <laughs> try sna It's like when you, when you don't know if you want the salty snack or the sweet snack, where you really kind of want them both. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if I'm gonna get this in order, but I definitely have Lots of things to share um, in that whole venture. I think I kind of set that all up. This is the two-week comfort my soul situation, um, which did involve shopping, of course. Um, so, and some things I purchased over the last two weeks um, have not been sewing related, but certainly comforting nonetheless. And it is the holidays, so you need to buy gifts and things like that. So, I don't know exactly where I want to start. Let's start with an oldie but a goodie. Um, so, a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger. And it's not and, it's just a badger. Um, but I have made a little bit of progress on this bad boy. Um, I have started the second row, and um, which involves the peacock tail. And I would say the only thing I, I really enjoy now, and I exclusively use my iPad or my phone for charts, um, I enjoy being able to really zoom in without necessarily needing magnification on my eyes. 
on the chart. I really focus in on the area. It helps me count, even though counting is still hard. I don't get it right all the time. Um, but this particular pattern, when I cut the booklet open, if you recall, um, it, it comes as a booklet, this chart from the Scarlet Letter. And um, I took pictures of it initially to upload to GoodNotes. Um, and I just, the page curve kind of was getting in my way. So I cut, I, I took the staples out, I cut it in half um, and had my husband scan in um, the chart for me, which has worked loads better. It's really great. The problem is that there are a lot of page breaks and as many of you stitchers can lament with me, uh, even though the chart is very good, it does shade in the two rows that overlap on the pages. But to me, like it just, it's still very confusing. And now I'm really, um, my dog is playing with toys, so you may hear squeaking. Um, I am really addicted to the digital chart and several charts ha now come when they're digital download you have the option of doing the one big chart and then just being able to open up to the area so you don't have any page breaks and now I'm a spoiled girl so I had to um, actually print up a couple of these pages I just went to my copier and I'm not gonna flash the chart I'm gonna show you backwards so you can kind of see that the chart is there. So I physically, where the page break was, taped them together. I lined them up so I didn't have any page breaks. And I had to use uh, the paper version, which was not my, it's not as enjoyable. I'm just going to say it. Uh, but it allowed me to complete the tail. And um, there's a little moth butterfly thing um, right beneath the tail. So I don't have it all, well, let me just show you. First of all, would you like to see the whole thing? Let's see if I can get it all in there. Do, 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 do. Isn't it pretty? So this is what I was working on here. Um, I don't have the, what remains is one full color. So I didn't fill that in. I, as you know, I like to do the outline and fill in, do the outline, fill in, that kind of thing. So um, I am meeting up with some stitchers today. If you're on the Tar Heel State Stitchers group, um, I believe that was announced that we're meeting at Steelcroft um, Starbucks at one o'clock. Um, so I will be working on some green stuff because I don't want to deal with looking at a chart on this but in that butterfly little cute so I got him done but I've been very distracted so I have not been working as exclusively on um, this guy but I am looking forward to because there's some the things over here are like reds and different colors so I'm looking forward to uh, getting to those sections so I've been basically on that same page for like two weeks, which this is a big ass project. So also known fondly as a BAP. Um, so, you know, when I get to it, I get to it. I'm not, this is like a 10 year plan, <laughs> maybe five year plan. I don't know. I've done a lot of bigger projects. And again, this is like 327 stitches by 350 some odd stitches. I've done some larger projects like that. They'll get done in a year or two. Um, it's still very enjoyable. I am just a flipperty gibbet. Um, I also worked a little bit on Sweet as Can Be by Carolyn Manning Designs. Let's see if I can pull that up for you. Um, on my good notes. Uh, this is another full coverage, but it's smaller, so um, it doesn't feel as massive. You feel like you can get something done. Let me expand it a little bit so the chart's not showing. So 
So this is sweet as can be. And this is all my good notes. I uh, bought the charts directly from her website. Uh, I bought like three charts from her. And um, what I love most about good notes and has spoiled me rotten and I'm fine with it is that when you work on your phone and you mark things off because you can highlight where you're at, it uploads to my iPad, which I most commonly, I stitch here. You can see my light here is usually on. So I have my Dazor lamp from what the 80s. Mom and grandma bought this Dazor lamp and it is so old. I am so grateful. It works perfectly. Um, so I have the Dazor lamp coming this way and this light coming this way. And it's with my readers it's like the perfect scenario so this is where I stitch and then I can watch my big screen TV and watch the Lord of the Rings or whatever my teammates are texting me constantly somebody asks a question and then like there's like 13 people on the text message so there's lots of oh hi Mia hi Mia there's lots of people responding all right settle down so you saw sweet as can be. Let's see where we're at. Mia, do you want to show them? So I got a little more done. Um, this is like 127 by 127, so that's as long as it's going to be. Uh, Carolyn Manning does a lot of, um, because they're all full crosses, they're, um, they're Ada friendly. Most of her designs I see are on Ada. I still prefer... Um, linen and this particular design is very pink based and the ground cloth on the uh, that was recommended was a pink light pink Ada and I got Newcastle linen 40 count in blush and it's a nice match here are the here are the threads little floss toss so um, I got some shopping um, got delivered yesterday and so I was very uh, excited and I was showing Mike M my hubby and uh, I was trying to show him the floss on the fabric and doing a floss toss for him so then he pretended to do the floss toss and he, he needs some practice, but it was entertaining. All right, and that's in one of my bags. This was an odd size. I was using up odd sizes of uh, vinyl and this fabric and um, I my preferred filling is the soft and stable or the bosal, uh, like that, that thicker foam. Um, I like how it cushions. Um, it's got the right amount of cushion and also the right amount of st stiffness to uh, keep the keep it not so floppy. Um, and then my stitching for work is in this cute little bag. It's a little tiny bag. Look how jammed it is. And I have this Lori Holt strawberry on it. And my favorite label. Yes, I made it. So this is a Quaker. Oh, oh my gosh, my dog is... Get, there's nothing in there. No treats for you. This is the chart. And it's um, a square Quaker by Marjorie Massey. This is on 40 count platinum, and again, this is my work stitch. What I stitch on my lunch break. Oh, that's the back, and that's the back. See, so exciting. <laughs> I will say, um, that's where I'm at with it. This is the bottom one here. Started with that one, Mia. Um, I have been liberated in my stitching life. Um, 
I was in the camp where your back had to look all all straight up and down and uh, there was just no two ways about it you just had to figure that part out um, after re-entering uh, uh, the stitching world as I have um, during the pandemic and being introduced to floss tube um, I would say Jean Farish is um, Jean Farish Needleworks is the person I credit to relearning a lot of different techniques or flat out learning techniques um, I learned I don't know when I was eight or younger how to cross stitch and was you know so like I really don't have a memory of learning except a couple things like all your X's need to go the same way um, in the direction the bottom uh, leg and the top leg all need to go in the same direction uh, in your in your project and uh, that you needed to keep the back really neat and I never really learned that there were multiple ways to make the crosses like um, there and now I'm not going to remember the names of them but I know there's English there's Danish there's one more that I can't remember um, but it's all how to make the X's whether you do one leg all the way across and then go back or do the individual X's and what Jean has kind of taught me is that all of them are acceptable to have in the same project that the point of having a neat back is not that it looks perfect but that it lays flat so when you are finishing your work you don't have bumps and knots and all those kinds of things it's been very liberating um, I would really recommend you going to her channel if you haven't already and she does have wonderful tutorials um, none of her videos are very long, kind of like mine, although mine might be a little longer today. Um, so, a couple other things that I did when I'm like, ah, I, I need, I need, what can fill the hole <laughs> in my soul? Um, um, you may remember if you watched me in the past that I ordered a diamond painting kit. Um, I ordered the paint gem because uh, they were small and um, I don't know, the larger patterns that just, they weren't capturing, um, they weren't, they weren't images I really wanted to, to do. So I bought a mandala set and I did that in one night. <laughs> I would say that it's probably about four hours. It is very satisfying. All the all the Instagram ads are very accurate. <laughs> it is it is meditative and um, and delightful. It makes a nice clicking noise when they all line up. It's delightful. All the things and they're shiny. So I did that little guy. Um. I also. Uh, I've been wanting to try Roxy Floss Co. Um, or Leo and Roxy. I don't remember what they are. Um, I've been wanting to try their threads, and I've I've looked on the website a couple different times. Um, but with the Curious Crafters uh, enabling me with the Artsy Housewife, um, and uh, Rock Roxy Floss Co. has the or Leo and Roxy. Again, I know they've done a name change. I don't, I don't remember what they're called now, but this is what I got. Um, I've also been kind of craving another black project or a, a single color project. And so I've kind of just had those thoughts lingering in my head. So as I was enabled and going to their website, uh, evertote.ca, uh, I think is where the Evertote um, uh, website is. I uh, went ahead and looked at blacks and you can see I got some blacks. Um, I wanted to try the floss 
I didn't want a high variegation, but I wanted a rich color. So this is charcoal. And um, let's see, this is how like lots of things have come together. So I apologize in advance if I feel like I'm jumping around. Um, I, by watching Modern Folk Embroidery, at one point he talked, Jacob talked about an app that was similar to Pattern Keeper. It's called Silk um, Cross Stitch Patterns, I think. Um, and let's see if I can pull it up on my phone so you can see what it looks like. It looks like that little bird at the top. Oh, oh where'd it go? Right there, that little bird guy. Um, so I, a long time ago, downloaded it. Uh, it's a neat app. Um, it's not an extensive amount of designers, but it's a fair amount, um, all with lots of nice patterns. Not all of Jacob's patterns are on there. Um, but again, there's some free patterns there. Um, and it's, it operates from my understanding. Pattern Keeper is only on Android and I'm an Apple girl. Apple has my life. I can't go back. Um, nor do I want to. Let's just make that clear. Um, so I've never used Pattern Keeper, but from what I hear other floss tubers talk about, you know, keeping track of your count and how much progress you've made in the pattern, which I can see is appealing. I've never felt the desire to track my progress that way because I'm not motivated that way. Um, but I bought this pattern not too long ago by Jacob uh, DeGraff and it's Little Bird Quaker. I bought this with the intent of, I don't, I don't need to do another larger project. And this is not ginormous, but it is also not small. Let me see where, oh, no, let me see. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the exact stitch count properly here. Let's, uh, oh, it's 225 across and 317 down. So I would say it's probably medium sized, medium sized. It fits on a, a fat quarter of fabric, so you don't have to buy a half a yard or a yard. So I would say medium. <laughs> It's got 19,257 stitches in it, X's in it. Um, so I had every intention to like do the top half or do the bottom half or do the alphabet. I didn't really think I was going to do the whole thing. But as you can hear me say, I did the whole thing. So I wanted to have the option when I was buying this fabric, uh, this lint, what is this? This is floss. <laughs> when I um, was buying this floss, I wanted to get enough that if I wanted to do the whole thing, I could. So I got six skeins. And you can see this is charcoal. This does have a little bit of variegation to it, but it's still very consistently black. Not a, uh, a lot of the other blacks, which are beautiful, um, I just didn't want that same variation. So, how this project has come together is uh, through this project here, Ann Harper, 1839, um, Fox and Rabbit had an exclusive with the Stitcher's Merchant, um, and they did a special run of Dust Bunny color, and they did this pattern exclusively for the Stitcher's Merchant. So, I clearly bought it. And this was, I don't know, maybe a year ago, maybe nine months ago. Um, it took a while to get. Obviously, it was worth it. I, again, linen is expensive. Um, I didn't, didn't think I wanted to do this whole big thing, but I really liked the different color theme in it, and I really liked the birds. And I thought maybe I would just do a portion of this. 
so I only got a half yard of fabric. I only got a fat quarter of fabric. And I got 40 count dust bunny. And you can see I have commandeered it for the little birds Quaker. Look how pretty that is. So dust bunny um, is a, a great lighter neutral color. Um, it, it does have some tan um, variation to it. I don't know if this side you can see better. It's so light um, in the modeling that I didn't think too hard about um, what side to use or where to start or anything like that. So this does fit perfectly on this fabric and I started last night as soon as I got the fabrics out <laughs> and um, I did that amount of stitching which is really pretty I'm very pleased with it so again showing you the pattern getting that focus so just that upper right hand corner side it's gonna be pretty and it really is so relaxing to not have to look up the color and all that kind of stuff. So this project is so new, it does not have a bag yet. Um, so it is just out and about. But what I've also been, oh goodness, avalanche. Let's see if I can rearrange this again. Um, I have also had in the back of my mind um, I have had this quilt that I would like to make, um, and it is inspired, inspired by, um, You've Got Mail. A nice little rom-com with two favorite actors, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. Um, Meg Ryan has, um, an on-point pinwheel quilt on her bed in the second half of the movie. And it's back, um, which you can see a portion of it in the scene where she is sick and Tom Hanks is tucking her into bed because uh, he came to visit her because she was sick, uh, is a really delightful um, turquoise blue clamshell repetitive pattern on the back. And the front is creams and browns. And I was like, so pretty. So I started collecting some brown fabrics and some ivory fabrics in the search of a perfect backing. Um, and um, I have, through my mother, shared supplies, uh, an Accu cutter, um, and we have the six inch block, um, block box, and it has quarter square triangles and half square triangles in a three inch finished block size uh, that I can create different blocks to create a six inch block which is smaller than what the quilt is but again this quilt is inspired inspired by but I have had this quilt in my mind for a solid two years and I have not found a backing that I liked, that I felt was inspired by this movie. So I have um, really struggled with it, so I hadn't started. Um, and then this two weeks have come up and I'm like, I just need to cut some fabric. <laughs> so um, again, this is half square and quarter square triangles, so there's a lot of bias. And having just done the paper piecing project with Veruska Zarati and where I dabbled in starching my fabric, I took my pile of fabrics that I had in one of my trusty uh, sweater boxes from the container store. Um, I had my stash just kind of put it all in one project and let it build up. Um, I went ahead and starched all the fabric on Wednesday and then I started cutting Wednesday evening after I, you know, because I had all varying sizes. It wasn't a lot of yardage. I did have some yardage, but not all of it. 
And so I took some time to dream up the pattern and I wanted to show you kind of that. Uh, things I have learned from other quilters. So, Pepper Corey is a very well-known quilter uh, who lives in the coast of North Carolina. And uh, I have, my mom has taken some classes with her. She's written some books. She has done some great um, shock cotton fabrics, um, which is where the warp and the weft are two different colors creating a whole third color um, and when I first joined the quilt guild I joined the uh, programs committee and I had her come to our guild and have a workshop and a lecture and in that she recommended getting this paper an 8 by 8 grid or a 10 by 10 grid or something that would resemble the quilt blocks that you could easily divide and uh, so, of course, I immediately, office supplies and crafting supplies overlapping. My world is in, in unison. Um, so I have been practicing how I wanted this quilt to lay out. So, because I wasn't quite sure. The quilt in the movie is an on-point design, which... For neighbor Ron on point is where the corner is down like a diamond shape and then there is um, uh, the pinwheels are not all in line they are you know divided up by blocks of solids or really low volume um, prints and so these are kind of my iterations of like this is where all the quarter triangles quarter square triangles which if you <laughs> let me see if I can well quarter square triangle just makes all of these half squares smaller right yes this this here is a quarter square triangle where there's two uh, lights and two darks that's the quarter square and making the quarter square, you can then make the bigger pinwheel, uh, depending on if you, if you can see this right here, where the quarter square triangles show up, um, but they are making a pinwheel. So then you can see here where I was playing with making them be a little, you know, having more lights in there to create the pinwheel more on point. Um, and then I went to this. So this is half square triangles and quarter square triangles. And if you see this highlighted square, which is how I think I'm going to um, formulate the blocks, um, that's two quarter square triangles with one half square triangle. So that's kind of four blocks together, which will, and I know I, this is not perfect, but you get the drift. This is kind of a bigger scale of it, of what I want. Now, I do think I want to do a, kind of a more of a bed size quilt, but I have no idea really how much fabric I have, if that's gonna make up what I want. I have a king size bed, that's really large. Um, and if I did six inch blocks, I would probably need to do something like three to 400 individual blocks <laughs> to do a queen, king size uh, quilt. I may or may not do that. But um, I did, again, was cutting up the fabric, so I wanted to see what it would look like. So I made one block, one test block. So I have like five yards of this material and I've cut it all up. I haven't finished putting it through the dies of the Accu cutter, but um, I will get to that. I got it all starched and segmented. And then these delightful things 
are the darks and the mediums and the lights and things are falling down. But all these, look at all these fabrics. These little quarter square triangles, aren't they cute? So I've been uh, enjoying cutting things. And then I was looking for fabric for something else, another project that somebody asked me to make them a, ba a bag. Um, and then, you know, that fabric, I just need a little bit of that. And so I was continuing to look for this backing because I was cutting up my triangles. And all of a sudden, I stopped looking at wide backs and I was starting to look at yardage. And this fabric came up. And it's not what is on the quilt or similar to what's on the quilt. I was kind of looking for a peacock feather or something like that, but I couldn't find the repetitive pattern part is really what made me happy and the saturated color made me happy. When I saw this, I was like, oh, this is different. It's different colorway. Um, and, but it does reflect back to the movie. So let me show you. This is Ruby Star uh, Flowerland Daisies in Verdant. It's still in the packaging, so I apologize if you're seeing some glare. But in the movie, Meg Ryan's character loves daisies. They're a happy flower. And in the scene that is inspiring me, Tom Hanks brings her daisies. So I was like, you know what? I really like this green. It is not the peacock blue colors that were high, you know, highlighted in it, but uh, here's a different. I really like the brown with the green. Brown and green is a good color combo. Think of trees, green leaves, brown bark. So um, I kind of liked that it was a departure. And again, I had a conversation with myself this quilt is inspired by. So my pinwheels are gonna be much smaller than what's on her quilt. My back is gonna be much different than what's on her quilt. <coughs> but is it gonna be just as lovely? Yes. So, I'm very excited. This is yardage. I am gonna to have to piece my back together and I will probably need some pinwheels for that portion as well. But we shall see. But isn't this lovely? Ron, what do you think? On point pinwheels, what do you think? My pinwheel is not perfect, but that's okay because I made it. Otherwise, it's pretty darn close. And that's the best part about the Accu Cutter. So here's another pattern. So you can see how these corners are squared off. That means that when you're sewing, you don't have any trimming. You have a lot of trimming to do beforehand, but you can see how nicely all those dog ears are already taken care of. And let's see if you can see here. Like everything just lines up perfectly. It's blowing out a little bit, but it's just easy sewing. If you can get an accurate quarter inch seam, the Accu Cutter is delightful. Um, but isn't that the way <laughs> of all things in quilting? Like that quarter inch seam, you just gotta be right. And I will say that you don't have to have an accurate quarter inch seam. You just have to have an accurate consistent seam. So you can't do a scant quarter inch somewhere and then a fat quarter inch in another place. You need to have all the same consistent. Uh, that way, the same mistake is repeated all in your quilt. And then it, it's not a mistake. It's just how you quilted it or how you pieced it. So I have all, all that, the little pattern that I made and the, all the fabrics in there together. Um, like I said, I still need to cut more background out. But I think what I'm going to do, here's because I don't want to abandon the halo quilt. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna get this kind of set up so that this can be my thread bunny or the little piece of fabric that I put through when I'm uh, 
so that I'm not just cutting my threads. Especially in my machine, I find that when you use the thread cutter, uh, your next beginning of a seam can kind of be like a, a wad of thread on the back. Um, so if I can use another scrap piece of fabric to kind of run my needle through, then I can trim off what I'm sewing and have a, a smoother start to my next theme uh, without wasting a lot of thread. So a lot of people call it different things. Um, Kate from The Last Homely House calls it a thread bunny. Um, I enjoy that. And I have tons of them and they become little pieces of art um, between all the different colors of thread and then reminds me of the fabric scraps that I'm using reminds me of um, you know fabrics that I liked <laughs> that, I, that I'm just using every little last bit of it so I think what I'll do is um, you know basically make a quilt when I'm making quilt Lori Holt does this Bonnie Hunt Bonnie Hunter uh, yeah. does this as well where she's making a bonus quilt um, so because these are so small I could take two two quarter square triangles and start sewing them together and be making the halo quilt while I'm doing this because the halo quilt is very hard to um, what is that term chain piece it's not an easy chain piecing and there's a lot of glue basting so there's a lot of starting and stopping so I think having this be a productive part of making the halo quilt might continue to motivate me to get the second half of that quilt top pieced so then I can piece my rows together and I have a strong suspicion that that quilt will not be laying flat <laughs> um, I already can tell that my finished squares are not all consistent but that's okay I'm just gonna get it done because it's a fun quilt and I love all the pieces um, I just need to get it done it's one of those quilts that I enjoy looking at um, it's uh, got a nice amount of dopamine when the pieces line up and you get them sewn together but the actual act of sewing them to me is not enjoyable I think it has too many steps like my mother was saying at Wednesday stitching she said you know a recipe could be really good but if it's got 15 steps or 15 different ingredients I'm not making it <laughs> and I think that's one of those lessons that this quilt is gorgeous and it's been fun cutting it out um, the individual parts of components of doing it has been fun um, but it's also been a little bit of a slog because there is so much to do. Each little, I don't know, five and a half inch block, six inch block is uh, got like 15 pieces in it. And then you also have to glue baste it. It's not, it, there's, it's just a lot. Right, Ron? Back me up on this. Ron's doing this quilt too. <laughs> and take heart, Ron. There's no race. You, you get it done as you want to get it done. So anyway, that is where my scatterbrain flipperty gibbet. I want to comfort myself because I'm sad <laughs> that my friends are going away on a weekly basis. Um, mind has been. That's just where I've been. So I don't have any plans other than to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, I hope that everyone has a good holiday. I do think I'll have another episode before Christmas, but we'll, we'll see. Who knows? Um, I do, I am excited that Christmas is on a Monday, which means I have Sundays and Wednesdays off. So I have an automatic weekend, two days together, which is not, um, happening often in the retail world or at least in my retail world um, I very much enjoy having one weekend day and one work day off because when all y'all are at work 
then I can go do stuff. <laughs> I don't have to be with the masses all the time. Um, but it does mean that you occasionally can feel a little disjointed because there's not a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time to recover or your, your days off become so jam-packed with fun things or things you want to do, but you also don't get to just putz around the house. And quite frankly, putzing is my favorite hobby. <laughs> I wish I could putz more often. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap up. You guys have a great couple weeks and I'll see you soon. Bye.